na zdrowie to walić stamp. Bienvenue and welcome to 150 Days of Winter. Hello! Seven screws, one plate. So, back in November 2018, I decided to geek out and review my old VHS collection of Greg Stump ski movies. If you haven't watched the original video, uh, there should be a link above that. There. There'll also be one down in the comments below. I recommend you watch that before you watch this, as this is an extension to the first video. All good? Little did I know that this would become one of my most rewarding YouTube videos. It got the attention of the director. And in March 2019, I got an email from Greg Stump, which initially I didn't believe it was him, as with anything on the internet. However, he asked me to give him a call and the following day we uh, had the most amazing chat. He gave me some really amazing insights into his films that I didn't know about. Uh, he pointed out some of my errors, which I freely admitted to. Uh, I won't lie, it was mind-blowing, even for a middle-aged guy. By the end, my inner child was beaming and my hands were shaking more than they normally do. However, he asked me one question. Where is Siberia? Don't worry, he wasn't giving me some sort of uh, shock geography quiz. He was referring to one of the last ski films that he made, one I hadn't reviewed. He was even gracious enough to give me access to his online archive so that I could reacquaint myself with the film. So, Mr Stump, here is my delayed review of Siberia. Enjoy. Now, before I start, I should say that Siberia is un uh, unlike any of his previous ski films. If the other eight films all have their own style, then Siberia is Greg Stump's ski documentary to the aftermath of the fall of the once powerful USSR as concerning a possible heli ski operation. It's still a ski movie. But it's filmed in a very raw, fisheye lens, grisly, grainy, and matches the subject matter. Almost to go as far to say as it's ski noir, um, the bankrupted country, uh, the dilapidated ex-military helicopters, the cabin in the woods in the middle of nowhere heli-ski operation the blizzard conditions and the constant danger of avalanches. Snow conditions in Russia look absolutely terrible. The uh, safety is completely non-existent. All shown for what they are. There's no Frankie goes to Hollywood, no hoodlum priest. Just chilled out tunes that match the somber wild surroundings. And of course, Mr. Stump's silky smooth narration. If you are, like me, a connoisseur of Mr. Stump's work, this very much looks like an add-on to Ptex Lies and Duct Tape. Despite a three-year gap between them, it could have been a double feature. You have Scott Schmidt and Craig Kelly, Island Lake Lodge, a lot of black and white footage where Ptex deals with avalanches in the Selkirks in the USA and the relative wilds of Le Grave, France. Siberia goes full gulag with the Russian section abruptly ending with the announcement that one of the hosts died in an avalanche later that year. It really brings home to you how easy 
we have it in the West. Which of course brings us to the final question, uh, is it worth watching and what is the grade that I would give it? If you're expecting a ski movie where people like huck off cliffs and, and do crazy stuff, this definitely isn't the film for you. However, if you really want to know the uh, completely different side of skiing, that would be in after the downfall of the USSR. Watch people take their lives into their hands, then this is definitely worth a watch, okay? Uh, as I said, more ski documentary than ski film. If it was filmed today like this, it would be called a vlog and everyone would call it amazing, okay? Back then, they were all using Hi8 cameras, which before digital, okay? How would I rate it? It's tricky. I would actually, I would give it a B on the whole package because I I think it's an interesting film. The way that it's shot and everything like that, I think it's absolutely perfect. I'm happy that I saw it again. I have to thank Mr. Stump. With all that in mind, where does this stand in my Greg Stump leaderboard? Well, Number nine, we still have the good, the rad, and the gnarly. What I'm going to call the POV camera test film. We have at number eight, a fistful of moguls. Let's just call that uh, the bumps film. And at number seven, we have Siberia, what I'm going to call the Russian documentary. Why is it at number seven? Well, because Putex Lies and Duct Tape is at number six. And as I feel that they go together, that is why. Anyway, for P-Tex, Lice and Duct Tape, I'm going to call it the Ski Bum film. At number five, Groove Requiem in the Key of Ski. I'm going to call that Greg Stamp's anti-war film. Then at number four, we still have License to Thrill. I'm going to call it The Birth of Ski Porn. Number three, we have Dr. Strange Glove. I'm going to call this Maltese Flamingo Redux. Number two, Blizz de Vars, the classic. And at number one, of course, we have Maltese Flamingo, the debut. I know it wasn't his debut, but for me, it was his debut. So, again, do you agree with me or not? Comments down below. If you enjoy these uh, film reviews, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I will see you all for the next movie review. Ciao.